Hey Chicago, this is Claudia Garcia Rojas with Gozamos at the New Yorker Hotel for the Latin Alternative Music Conference and I'm here with Zenia, Rubinos and Marco. How you doing? We're great. Estamos muy bien. Que bueno. I'm good. You're good. Good. Um, so tell me about your new album. You just sort of showed this cover to me, which is really nice. So tell me a little bit about it. Sure. Uh, well, my new album, Magic Tricks, uh, just came out in January. We uh, made it with a lot of love here in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, we got to work with a kind of all-star cast of crew, Marco Buccelli, my co-producer and drummer, and uh, Jeremy Lucas, our engineer, Grammy Award-nominated engineer, and um, Adam Minkoff, our bassist. So it's a, it's a collection of a lot of songs that I've been r uh, working on for years, other songs that I just wrote right before the recording. And Nice. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about sort of like the lyric base of it. Like what is what is the music particularly speaking of and to whom? Well, the music is uh, very uh, rhythmic based. Okay. Uh, the words are secondary to what I do. I play with uh, rhythms and short phrases. I okay. uh, flip the, the time of them uh, and try to do a lot with uh, very little bit okay. and the the words I sing in Spanish I sing in English I was born here my parents are from Cuba and Puerto Rico okay. and I have nice. um, all of those languages and influences kind of flowing through um, but the primary thing of my music is uh, playing with rhythms and some wordplay so okay. uh, it speaks to I think a, a wide audience uh, maybe folks who like something a little bit left of center okay. a little bit eccentric Okay, nice. And then you collaborate with someone who speaks Italian. I do. What's that collaboration like? It's uh, sometimes we speak Italian. Okay. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Parliamo italiano. Parliamo italiano. Alle volte. Alle volte. <laughs> sometimes we speak English. Alle volte. Okay. Alle volte. And I'm trying to speak Spanish with not <laughs> much uh, <laughs> success. <laughs> no, no much success over there. But you know, so no, it's uh, it's been great, Senia. Um, as she said, she writes the song and the songs, and then we get to work on them together, okay. sound-wise. Sometimes we arrange them together. So. Cool. Um, did you both meet here in New York? We or? actually met uh, a few years ago in Boston. Okay, in Boston. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so you've been collaborating as you're both sort of located. We have been collaborating for a long time. Yeah. The music changed a lot. Okay. But we have been playing together for quite a quite a long time. That's great. Um, tell me a little bit about who some of like your musical inspirations are. Oh, sure. Well, um, I grew up in a house where my father listened to a lot of classical music, like okay. Ravel, Prokofiev. And we uh, also, I've, I've been privileged, as all of us have, with the internet to have a huge, wide range of uh, music to listen to. We okay. can, you can listen to all of the music that's ever been recorded, pretty okay. much. Uh, so I listen to tribal music, to jazz, to avant-garde music, to indie uh, rock, uh, like two artists, uh, current artists that really yeah. inspire me, like uh, Juana Molina, like Tune Yards, Dirty okay. Projectors. So it's a, a wide range of, of things. Okay, how about yourself? Uh, I listen to a lot of music as well. Yeah. Um, um, I want to say that my back background is more rock, punk rock. Okay. Listen to classical music, free music, jazz, a lot of mm -hmm. jazz. So I'm, I've been influenced by different music. I listen to a lot of songwriting. Probably mm -hmm. one of my best influences were just was just my mother singing yeah. Italian songs when I was a kid and I was living in Italy. So okay, yeah. interesting. Um, and the reason why I was asking you how you both connected is because right before the interview we were talking about um, Brooklyn and so uh, we were talking about gentrification specifically and what, sort of like how it is that uh, the landscape is changing. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about sort of like your perspective on? on what is happening as, as residents um, of, of Brooklyn? Well, uh, you, you'll answer to that more specifically. I just say that for, I am, I guess I'm considered an immigrant. I, I moved here about okay. 10 years ago and uh, I'm an Italian. I was born and raised in Italy. So okay. to me, for example, it looks uh, in a very, it's very different and weird sometimes, especially when I am in Italian neighborhoods because uh, these neighbors have changed so much. I remember me reading about, like, Saw being uh, the Italian neighborhood back mm -hmm. in 1910, 1915, and used to be a pretty 
low income, pretty for real, real neighborhood. Yeah. And now it's so, so you know, wow. and yeah. uh, and it's 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 in, it's been interesting for me to be to see the transformation being an immigrant at the same time. So right. Do you feel that you're welcome within like the Italian community here in New York? Not so much with the Italian community because okay. uh, I don't think that Italians are good with the uh, communities. Okay. And uh, Italian American are very different, different from it. Not bad or better. It's just yeah. different from Italians. So mm -hmm. I don't really belong to that culture because I okay. was born and raised in Italy. And Italians they move from Italy to U.S. now. Yeah. They don't create as much of a community. Yeah. So I feel welcomed in New York in general. Okay. And maybe music can also be a way to connect. True. Right? True. True. Which sometimes that happened. Uh, I have connected with Italians through music or with yeah. other people. I want to say that I feel good in New York. I think that New York, yeah. uh, I don't know if people think about it that way, but I think that New York is, could, be, could be welcoming. Yeah. And at least I feel welcome. So. Okay. And how about for you, Sonia? Because we were talking yeah. about Brooklyn, too. So. Well, Brooklyn has changed. I mean, all of New York has changed so much, but it, particularly in Brooklyn, in the neighborhoods I moved, uh, when I first moved to Brooklyn, I lived in Bed-Stuy, and then I moved to an area called Gowanus. Uh, and now I live in kind of northern Brooklyn, uh, okay. near Williamsburg. Okay. And all of these places have oh, had... I've heard about Williamsburg. <laughs> yes, all of these places, especially particularly Williamsburg, okay. because uh, when I first uh, moved to that area, it was kind of like a barren industrial landscape oh, of... Okay. Uh, warehouses and uh, the waterfront you can kind of sneak in a fence that's kind of broken and go and look at the city and feel like you're nowhere but and no one it's a secret like no yeah. one can see you looking at this beautiful skyline and now two or three years later there's high rises and clubs and restaurants and it's all really the hip place to be so it's amazing how fast and on a dime that changes right. um, and you know we've had the the fortune good fortune to bump into some artists that were born in Bushwick that okay. work in Bushwick and they've really felt that transformation you know from living in like the slums where all the drug lords and the gangs were and having you know scholarships to go and study and coming back and right. seeing that all of the hipsters and all of these art galleries live there you right. know it's it's a really interesting paradigm and it can help the right. community um, right. But I feel like maybe the you know there's a little bit of that that sense of like it's hard to build that community and to acknowledge these people that have been there all along right. and have seen this neighborhood go from zero to hero in a way you right. know. Um, one thing that I want to ask you in regards to that is, uh, for example, in Chicago, Wicker Park is a neighborhood that was formerly uh, Latino Puerto Rican uh, predominantly that is now well known for being like this. Uh, very eclectic space, sort of, I would think, like Williamsburg, right? And so, as an artist, um, my perspective might be that that might become a resource, right? Because Wicker Park is now a resource for so many different artists, whether you're a person of color or not, um, and whether you agree with uh, gentrification or not. So, do you feel that you have to sometimes compromise in so far as like having access to these communities that might now offer something that they didn't before? Mm -hmm. And how do you negotiate that? Well, uh, I think the, the most important thing for me is to try to respect uh, the people of any community. It's like when you go into someone's home, you just respect their space. And I feel that way about the people of Brooklyn and all of our different neighborhoods. And there are people that have lived on the same block and the same house for their family has lived there for decades, you yeah. know. And so who am I to come in and reclaim their space, you know. Right. Um, so I think the utmost thing for me is uh, yes I draw a lot of informa uh, information and, and uh, inspiration from these neighborhoods but I want to really pay tribute to them I want to okay. learn I want to be quiet and listen to what they have to tell me as well instead of coming in and just saying oh well I'm here now and right. this rent is cheap so we're gonna you know just come in and take right. over your, your spot you know right. so I think that's that that respect and being open to learning from these people is number one okay that's yeah. good. Um, and so I want to shift gears and talk sure. again about your music. And so tell me a little bit about what performances you've had here in New York and maybe any forthcoming performances where people might be able to see you at sure. outside of New York, perhaps. Yes. Uh, well, we just performed last night at the Mercury Lounge for the LEMC Indie Showcase, okay, which was a lot of fun. And uh, we've performed in 
all around New York since we this is our home base. We play in Brooklyn a lot and okay. in Manhattan. Uh, Friday, we're playing at the Cameo Gallery uh, here in Brooklyn with a couple amazing local bands and cool. Saturday at Bembe. Uh, and hopefully in the very near future, you're going to also see us across seas. Um, okay. in the fall and we tour a lot across the country we've been we drove from new york to washington state this guy is the, the driver man okay who like puts everybody to shame he's like he's like a trucker in another life I think. oh wow yeah <laughs> like, yeah we'll make sure to to watch out for you as we drive back to chicago yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well he's gonna be there if you go to a truck uh, like a trucker stop he's probably gonna be there trying to be friends with the truckers of the <laughs> thing that's his jam that's hilarious yeah. Um, where can people learn more about you? Uh, well, we're online on the, in the digital reality uh, okay. in senyarubinos.com, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Okay. You can find us. We just released a new video, which is actually a live performance okay. of one of the songs that's on the, the CD. It's called Cherry Tree. Okay. So if you just you know go on YouTube and type in Cherry Tree, Senya Rubinos Live, you'll, you'll see us. Okay, sounds great. We'll do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.